Hello, and welcome to the Learning Center. Today I have a very, very, well, you're going to see, Robert LeBlanc, who has seen miracles happen, who has um, found a wonderful world out there, and he's going to share that with you. Hello, Robert. Oh, thank you, Lillian. Tell me uh, exactly what you do in life. Uh, currently, I'm a truck driver. I've been a truck driver, uh, commercial truck driver, for probably 25 years now. Uh, about um, oh, several years back, I realized I wasn't telling enough people some of the wonders that I've seen within Christianity. And I decided to put it in a book. And uh, I had no idea how hard it was to sell books, but uh, it, you know, it's in the Lord's timing. Um, I've seen some wonderful things happen. I've also uh, would really encourage people, not, not just to see the uh, prayers answered, but to get to know God better, um, you know, reading something like this. Uh, there are a lot of joyful um, stories in the book. Uh, you know, one of my favorite, uh, years ago I was, uh, one of my, the ministries that I was part of, I was helping um, uh, take people who could not get to church uh, on their own to get to church. And I did that for 16 years, drove a, um, a 16 passenger, 14 passenger van. And one day I, I saw an elderly couple putting their, um, their uh, blind quadriplegic daughter into their van. They were pushing her up a ramp. Oh and, my goodness. And I um, approached them and I said, you know, if you ever need a, a hand getting her to, to church, please let me know. I'd be happy uh, to help her. Anyway, she called back. I'm not sure how long it was. Maybe. They probably needed the, you know, that very much help. Yeah. Well, she she, uh, she called back um, some time later and said she wanted to get to a Bible study. I told her I'd get home kind of late to be taking people to a Bible study, but um, I'd, I'd be happy to look for her. And she told me she was blind and quadriplegic, and I said, oh, uh, you know, we're in a summer break right now, but once we get going again, be happy to, you know, uh, to, you know find some place for you. And uh, I said, but in the meantime, I'd be happy to read to you. And so she said, she had prayed for two years for somebody to read the Bible to her. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started reading her the New Testament and I read it to her over the phone. And sometimes as I read the scriptures, I feel, you know, I'm not quite living up to a particular thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, Vivian, uh, would you please pray for me? We came across the little section about not lusting. and. I said, you know, would you please pray for me? And she, she did. And anyway, the next day, I'm, I'm making a delivery to a, a, um, one of the customers in San Diego. It was a welding supplies shop, and in their employee bathroom, across the um, from the from the yeah. toilet, was a chair. It had several copies of Playboy. And yeah. oh I'm my goodness! Uh, <laughs> and my first thought was, Vivian does not have eyes to see. Who am I? And not that I haven't failed in that category since then, but I had the opportunity to, you know, God was giving me the opportunity at the, that time to, you know, if you want to grow in this area, here's, you know. Yeah, here's, what you can do. Yeah. yeah, you know, I've heard, you know, people say, oh, don't play, pray for patience because, you know, he'll give you opportunities to practice <laughs> that patience. But anyway, I, I, I know that you have a, a longing for, um, you know, to, to hear some of the miracle stories. Um, I've, I've seen miracles. I've, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, ones that I've seen, I've recounted in the book, but, um, when Lily and I were practicing back in December for, um, you know, for the fir first interview that we did, um, I was reciting some of the Psalms and if, if it's okay with you, I'll, uh, recite a few for you. Sure, yeah. Um, this little book here, this is not what I wrote, but this is a, a prayer book that uh, a lot of um, uh, people pray. Uh, probably, you know, hundreds of thousands of people pray it per day. Yeah. Uh, but it uh, takes a lot of the Psalms and puts it into a daily format. And it, um, it, it really has touched me in the past, and I've... Um, 
sometimes as I recite some of the Psalms, people are touched real deep and wow. I can feel it inside. And when you and I were, when I was reciting it to you in your home, uh, you know, a couple of the Psalms that I knew, I felt heat in my chest. And I turned to you after I'd finished the Psalm and I said, did you f feel your heart heat up? And yeah. do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. And, and you said, well, yes, and I can see you clearly now. And you know, that was not a, a miracle that was lasting, that lasted into today. But yeah. still, that was a, a, a little move in the spirit of God, you know, um, you know, saying, listen for more, you know, or, or you know, turn yeah. to me, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, let me share a couple of psalms with you, and we'll get back to my book. Um, yeah. My soul, give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my days. Make music to God while I live. Mm -hmm. Put no trust in princes in mortal men in whom there is no help. Take their breath, their return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. He is happy, who is helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all it contains. It is he who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. The Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord protects a stranger and upholds a widowed and orphaned. The Lord loves the just, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. Zion's God from age to age. Do you like that one? I love it. It's very, very good. Now, um, one of the first psalms that I put to memory well, the first one that I put to memory was 95, but Psalm 100, <clears throat> I put to memory, and I used to share it a lot. And yeah. my um, youngest daughter, one time when she was in fourth grade, said, Daddy, you're always sharing that. And so I, <laughs> I, I went to a priest that I knew that teaches yeah. sign language, or not, he, not so much, he teaches sign language. He yeah. would um, minister to the deaf community in San Diego. Oh, yeah. And I said, would you please teach it to me in sign language? And yeah. so for about six is weeks. Is that hard to learn? Uh, for me, it is. I, yeah. I'm, I'm actually very, have a very poor memory. Yeah. I, do <laughs> have, I do have nine chapters, but that's only because of so much time I've spent trying to, you know, to put yeah. it to memory. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, this one was pretty short, but it's cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence, singing with joy. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock, his Gates, go within, singing with joy. Enter his courts or temple with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Indeed, how good is the Lord forever. His merciful love. He is faithful throughout time. When I was learning that psalm, I was, you know, um, taking little fragments of it per, um, yeah. per week and practicing it on strangers and stuff. And yeah. I get uh, to Do the... Do they turn away? <laughs> well, no, most of them are pretty open to it. I mean, I, I try to um, share with people who have interest, you know. Right, uh, right. But anyway, um, this... Uh, the, when I was working on his gates to uh, go within singing with um, joy to enter yeah. his courts. Well, the week that I was learning that, I, sh I came across a homeless woman that used to stay around the church that I would go to. And I shared it with her and she started to bust it, got laughing. And yeah. I said, well, what's going on? Uh, her, and uh, Linda uh, took me probably about 100 feet away. There was a um, Our Lady of Guadalupe Chapel and yeah. it's got an image of Mary 
in it, you know, that um, from a miracle that had happened hundreds of years ago. Yeah. And anyway, there's a wrought iron gate in front of it and um, a trash can. And she showed me, she pushed the trash can out of the way. Yeah. One of the gates had a broken piece. And so she'd squeeze under it in the, the wintertime just to, um, to sleep next to the candles to stay warm. Oh, yeah. And uh, so when I said, you know, to his gates to go within, to enter, well, she saw herself. And, you know, so, you know, she really had a good belly laugh over it. Yeah. But, but, but anyway, um, you know, sometimes it's little things that touch people. You know, one time I was driving a, as a um, tractor trailer driver, and I'm, yep. I uh, usually eat in the late afternoon, and I saw this couple at the end of an alleyway. One of them is in a wheelchair. One of them is standing. And so I pulled over my truck, and I walked back, and I, I said, have you had anything to eat? You know, because the guy, um, his his hands were black like the, the microphone stand from from yeah. grime, from being homeless and in a wheelchair. Wow. And uh, he was double amputated, uh, you know, uh, missing the lower um, part, you know, below the knee on both legs. Oh. Anyway, um, I said, have you, had anything to, have you had anything to eat? And he said, um, no. And so the woman that was with him um, was just a friend, and she went off to the nearby convenience store to get something. Yeah. And when she walked away, I said, how did you get in the wheelchair? And, right. and uh, he said, well, um, the double amputation from complications from diabetes. Uh, oh. He said, I have a partial working lung from working the coal mines. And he continued to share awful things. Yeah, yeah. And I tuned out after about the second or third one, and I started to silently pray. I wasn't stretching out my hands. I was just, you know, yeah. just silently praying. Right. And the woman came back up, uh, had, you know, returned from the convenience store, and he burst into tears. Mm -hmm. And she apologizes for him, said, oh, you have to um, forgive, you know, such and such. You know, uh, he, uh, and uh, he's having a bad day, and she corrects her, or he corrects her and said, I'm not having a bad day. I'm filled with joy. And he reached out he, with his blackened hands, and yeah. he grabs hold of my hands and starts to kiss him. Wow. But and I'm feeling some of the emotions that he's going through, and you know, I mean, you know, to me it was just a, a wonderful moment in time, you yeah. know, and you know, I was kind of disappointed with the Lord because you know, in, I was hoping for you know a physical healing for him, but <laughs> you know, God had other plans, yeah. you know, he's, you know, you know, you've met people who go through life and every day is a drudgery or. You know, or you know, and I'm pretty sure he's had a lot of those days. But to be filled with joy in that situation, you know, yeah. that's a remarkable moment. But you know, that's that's very true. But how do you respond to? You pick up a paper today, and there's a mother killing her little baby, or a father murdering his whole family, and on and on. There's so much, and all the people that are shot, you know. Right. Yeah. What What is going on? It's never been like well, you this. Know, um, it's, I, I is remember, the devil in charge now? Well, you know, years ago when I went to, um, I only went to like um, three months of parochial school, but in my public school, we had, we could sing, uh, you know, songs that were Christian. We could um Every day we started with the Pledge of Allegiance and the Lord's Prayer. And, you know, that was an expression, you know, that, that brought the school together. You know, we've, yeah. exp we've expelled God from school, you know. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, uh, we're kind of reaping the, the you know, the, the, uh, some of the awful things about it. You know, when 9-11 happened, you, you remember 9-11-01? Oh, yeah. I was in California. And within the book here that I have, um, I'm silently praying the hours while I'm, um, or it's called Christian prayer, but I'm silently praying it during the quiet time of a men's prayer group that I was with. Yeah. And during the, um, you know, the second, we watched on TV the second tower collapsing. This was at, uh, yeah. you know, around 6.30 in the morning, um, right. that Tuesday morning. And... Uh, but before that, before the, the, the tower had collapsed, I was asking God, 
how are they going to put the fire out? You know, you know, the, the flames are much higher than than the fire trucks and stuff. Yeah. And well, within the book here, it said a nation of firm purpose. Um, you protect uh, for its trust in you. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, Lord, you know, we, you know, as a nation, we've really kind of, you know, yeah. uh, uh, ha have, 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 some, have some problems. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I, I, I saw that there was a verse skip. You know, some, some of the psalms that this book puts to prayer, yeah. um, you know, they, they skip a verse or so. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to, to keep a particular theme going. Well, in this particular thing, I, I, I wanted to know what the rest of the chapter said. So yeah. I grabbed my Bible and I looked at the, the whole chapter. And it said, um, the haughty he would humble and the poor would walk through their dust. And that day the space shuttle took footage of the debris field, or, or actually you know, the smoke and the dust and stuff, stretching yeah. for more than 25 miles. But I mean, talk about tremendously putting a particular verse, you know, you know, yeah. into, you know, oh, wow, you know, yeah. but... Um, Would you remember when Christian uh, McArthur was a, the teacher, went into the, uh, she was going to go into uh, the, whatever the thing is called, the fuse into space, what is that? I'm sorry, I wasn't following you. Well, uh, you know, Christian McAuliffe, no, I don't. The science I... teacher, went on to space. She wanted. Oh to go. yeah, McAllister. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you know, one of the one of the beautiful things that happened. I mean, I know that was a tr very tragic event that happened. They were waking up to the um, the song, the Christian song, contemporary Christian song, "God of Wonders." You know, and you know, uh, it's. Uh, an amazingly beautiful song. And I remember President Reagan was talking about, you know, during, you know, after they had passed about, you know, they've gone, to, you know, to touch the face of God, you yeah. know. But, um, you know, that, that was a tremendously tragic event that, that did bring our nation together. You know, they're, they're, God can use tragedy, he can use joy, he can use all sorts but, of know, things to bring us closer to him. she was walking into the tube, I had, Something came over me and it said, it's going to explode. Mm -hmm. Just so clearly. And I no sooner thought it, it happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, it, it was an unfortunate event. I'm, um, what you know, a tragedy for the... Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, <clears throat> and you had you know, kids all across the country that had tuned in to watch that space launch because this was a teacher. She even went to, into space with an apple, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, how do we cope with all the, the... Well, you know, uh, when you were mentioning about, you know, mothers, you know, and their baby and stuff, I was remembering a, um, a tune that I sang, used to sing in a prayer meeting years ago. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think it was um, Carrie Langry, Carrie Lang, uh, Lang, <laughs> let's see, but anyway, uh, um, yeah. my tongue is twisted right now, but... It, the, the song was, I will never forget you, my people. I have carved you in the palm of my hands. I will never forget you. I will not leave you orphaned. I will never forget my own. Does a mother forget her baby, or a woman, the child within her womb. Yet even if these forget, yet even if these forget, I will never forget my home. I know that song probably touches you since you, you lost a child uh, many, many years ago. Yeah, well actually I even lost Michael, my uh, babe, the last child, and uh, I kept saying to my obstetrician, I think I'm carrying two babies. And I had put on quite a bit of weight. Oh, people that put on weight always say that. I said, no, I know when I can feel different positions at the same time. And sure enough, as I was 
in labor. The anesthesiologist came and, uh, you know, rubbed his stomach, and he said, oh my God, she's carrying a baby. And then it was silence. Yeah. Nobody talked, everybody was looking. It was like, and I thought, okay, what is it? And all of a sudden they went on to, let's still live with the next baby. Wow. And yeah. I never knew, but I, I had a feeling, I said, I have been saying right along, I have two babies there. And uh, so, and I, I was sorry that I didn't ask because I was so upset. What sex was it, you know, right. and all that. So I don't know, but. Uh, there was a, a movie that I loved um, within the last year. It was called Heaven is for Real. Yeah. And the little boy, you know, he did not die on the operating table, but he had a, a you know, a, an experience. And he said he had met his sister. And he said, yeah. what do you mean you met your sister? And he said, well, you know, you know and, and what is her name? And, and he said, well, she said you didn't give her a name. And, you know, because she had died, you know, uh, she was a miscarriage. Yeah. Uh, but um, there, were, there were all sorts of wonderful, you know, stories within that movie that just, yeah. you know, um, I love it, you know. Yes. So where is heaven? <clears throat> That's a question for you. Well, you know, um, <laughs> God is there. <laughs> God is there? I said God is there. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, where are we? You know, you know if, you, if you look at the, you know, if you were to take the strongest telescope and look for eons, you know, light years, at, you know, and more light years away, hundreds yeah. of thousands of light years, yeah. you know, that's still, you know, what we can see. Yeah. God is much more infinite than that, you know, and, uh, you know. You mean there are other planets that we haven't discovered yet? Well, I, I, I know there are, you know, uh, billions of stars that we we can't even name, but, you know, uh, but, you know, there, there are planets out there, but, yeah. you know, I think... Our job as a, you know, um, here on Earth is to get to know the Creator better and not so much be wrapped up in, you know, um, you know the creation. It's the Creator we need to learn from. Well, now this is going to be a hard question. What happens to the really wicked people? Do they get punished? Does anything happen to them? Do they burn in hell? What, what happens well, to them? Well, you know... Um, the, do I, they get away I with am, it? I uh, am Catholic. Uh, I'm Christian, and the five. Um, uh, I and you know Jesus mentioned, you know that there's a you know there's a Gehenna, you know that uh, and I I can't say who who makes it there, but he said where the you know fires are never extinguisher, the worm never dies, yeah. and you know to me that's a a place that you really want to avoid, you know. Um, I, I try to live my life to please God. And uh, there are a lot of joyful stories in here about, you know, um, uh, getting to know God better, getting to watch little miracles happen or even big miracles happen. Yeah. Uh, if I was in a, um, you know, bad situation, you know, or, you know, if I had cancer or some sort of other major ailment, I would like a book like this to help bring hope. You know, there are a lot of wonderful stories in there, uh, little st short stories uh, about God answering prayer. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, I can't say, you know, what level my track record is. I know that I've got had friends of mine that would see like people were blind from earth getting their eyesight or club foot being healed or yeah. heart conditions. Yeah, you know, they're, they're really, wonderful. Yeah, yeah they're wonderful all in story. Your book? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, a heart condition being healed and, you know, God showing up. And now, if, you, if there were people watching the show, and I hope they will be, uh, and they wanted to purchase one of the books, can you tell us how you do it? Um, the publisher is um, Westbow Press. Uh, you type in westbowpress.com. I know when your station had made the um, the last interview, at the end of the interview, they had contact information, and, uh, mm -hmm. including the publisher. And but it can be ordered through any bookstore. It yeah. can be ordered online. Uh, you know, if any of you and just type that, in that's what the cover looks yeah, like. Yeah, if you type in "Where will you plant your seed?" responding to the word of God, um, 
you know, you would get the information and be able to uh, order off of that. Yeah. I, um, I hope that um, you enjoy it, and I'd love to hear from you. I, I've had a lot of fascinating stories, and, you know, I like watching God show up. I like watching God, um, you know, or I like, I love watching people grow toward him. And you do all you can to contribute to, for that. I try, yeah. Uh, so uh, how do people reach you if they want to? Um, my email address um, is stfrans at msn.com. Right. And um, love to hear from you. The what? The oh, I, oh, I said my email address is stfrans at msn.com. Right. And can anybody meet you personally if they wanted oh, yeah. to? Get they want to email me. We can set up something. Yeah. Uh, also, we my my cell number is uh, 508-404-7675. Um, I usually try to recite ten chap or excuse me nine chapters of the Psalms on my way to work. Yeah. And if you put yourself on speaker, I've got a Bluetooth and uh, can uh, be part of the prayer time. Wow, that's very good. And uh, so I hope you come back again. Oh, I'd love to come back, Lillian. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a treat. Mm -hmm.